Hey guys, Gameboy3800 here once again, and I am back with the M17X GPU. This is the Quadro that's going to be flashed to a 280M, that's going to be flashed to a 9800M. It is a complicated process, I will admit, but it seems to work. I have some screws that now fit. Uh, I tried to trim the screws I had before, but they came out horrible. And didn't go into the heat sink right here at all. But I have found some screws that I already had that should fit okay. So first things first, we're going to put the GPU over here and get these silicon pads out. This pad will go over the memory and ensure that that gets cooled just as good as it can. So that's the cardboard piece out. It's got a big pink thing on the bottom and a clear plastic thing on top. I need to get some scissors and I already have scissors. And I'm going to cut some pieces off, about as long as I need to. So from here, that should be a bit big enough, so let's cut the other way now, and let's see how this fits. I'm just going to be one long strip all the way down. That looks good to me. So I will undo the pink side now, and put it over top of the memory in some of those small capacitors here. There we go. I'll take the plastic off once it is needed. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side as well. I'm going to cut off a slightly shorter piece because there's a capacitor there that shouldn't be covered. Or if it is going to be covered, which I might do anyways, it uh, doesn't need a piece that big. And there we go, those are all over the memory things, and you can't see that, I deeply apologize, kind of. Now we need two more over top of the power faces. I'm just going to take a big piece and cut it in half. Looks good to me. There's nothing quite like overkill, although I do believe this is too big. So let's shrink it up a bit. And that might actually be good. Let's take a look. Sticky on that one side, but it's alright. There we go, that's a better fit. And now for the other one, there we have it, and there's a small capacitor there that I believe should have a piece, so it's going to get its own uh, designated tiny piece. That may or may not be necessary, but it's going to go on there anyways. And yeah, you can see that the memory things line up with the silver pieces here. The GPU core lines up with the copper center. And then the power phases line up with heat up here in the heatsink. And I'm not sure if 
that's going to be needed, but I don't want it to be touching the bare metal there. So that's why I put a little piece there. And now we should be good to put on the thermal paste. I put a good amount on since that is a relatively small copper thing, so I want it to kind of overflow a little bit. So I put more than I should have on, but that is on purpose. Let's work on getting these uh, things undone now. For the silicon. Now this is 3 millimeter thick silicon. It is pretty thick, but it is going to go on to a pretty hot running GPU, so that's why I'm doing it. Actually, if I can get it off without taking the whole thing off, that would be most desirable, but that's not going to happen there. Aww. Got my finger in the not some more paste. Alright, same thing there. Alright, I got it. Gonna make sure that that's all nice and pressed down. Uh, this strip got out of line. I will reapply it. This is a pretty big and sticky piece of uh, silicon. So yeah. Hopefully the lighting is good enough for you. I angled the light so it's not directly uh, facing on to the card because the camera is autofocus and auto white balance. It was crazy when I did that before. I'm going to make sure I don't need to reapply that thermal paste that looks like it's still good. So what I'm going to do now is make sure everything's nice and pressed down and even. Flip it upside down and place it right on the heatsink as it should. With it like that now, I'm going to put in the screws, and these screws are small and difficult to get to, so I will get right back to you. Alright, here it is. It's all assembled. Uh, the uh, bits up front on the PWMs are a bit thick. You can maybe notice a little bit of bore flex, but uh, they will compress over time and eventually fit it. Uh, you notice I'm not using any X bracket. It doesn't need one. It uh, X brackets are used to evenly help displace, but I feel I did a good enough job here. And now we're going to put it into the M17X and see if it gets power okay and doesn't die. All right, here's the M17X in all of its glory. Gonna flip it upside down carefully. And first thing, as always, is remove the battery of any laptop you're working on. It contains power. Power plus putting something new in equals lots and lots of death. Well, for, for the computer, not for you. You should be fine, but... Eh, never mind. You never know. It could be your kryptonite and you don't know it yet. So the video cards in an M17X are located way up here. I will move it down. So you can see what I'm working on up here. You can see right here that we have one video card already in place. 
Now the next video card is going to be difficult because I need to plug in the fan and from this angle I cannot see so I'm going to turn it around and hopefully give myself somewhat of a chance of getting it in safely. Uh, I've got to bend this in all sorts of ways. I've got to hold it in position to bend it so I'll get right back to you. Alright, the fan is in place. Let's move the computer back in the viewable direction. And assuming we can get the fan cable out of the way, we'll just align her and put her in. That's being a bit more difficult than I'd like, but I got it. And in she is. Now I only have two screws uh, to hold in these two graphics cards. I'm going to remove one of them and put it into the other. It probably doesn't need it if you have the cover on, but you never know. Now both graphics cards are nice and in place. Let's put the shroud back on. Alright, that one long screw that's a bit sticking out. They have some like rubber gaskets or whatever to help keep it from, or help keep the GPU, GPU aligned. Whatever. I had a long screw and I needed to have rubber spacers in between. And it seems to be doing nicely. Second screw in. Battery in. And I'm going to go plug it in just in case it wants. I've had issues in the past where uh, booting up on battery after changing a part doesn't really work. So I'm going to grab a power adapter and be right back. Alright, it's plugged in on this side over here. I'm going to shut off this lamp. Open up the screen. And if you're wondering, yes. I have found the backlit keyboard, it is on the way, so there's going to be one more video of upgrading or replacing parts, there's going to be another video featuring this with a solid state drive upgrade. Power up. Alright, what is it, F2 or F12? F2, okay. Alright, it's got both temperatures for both graphics cards. That is good. It's recognizing them both. So we're going to go ahead and exit this. Let it boot into Windows, which does take some time. It's got an older hard drive. So I will get back to you. Alright, here we are. I've installed it and flashed the BIOS to it. Now let's take a look. Let's see if this will show up. Looks like it's going to be a no, but trust me, they're both 9800 MGTs, or at least they're both being read as them. But, I wish you could see this better, but uh, there is a severe temperature difference between the two of them. Uh, the thing is that the temperature difference seems to be coming from the old one, of all things. Uh, if I slow down this fan, stop it even. Let's see if the temps go way up. Uh, the temperatures... Did the temperatures change at all? Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one here. Whatever the case, uh, I have 
the keyboard lifted up here so that the two fans here can get nice fresh air without having the keyboard blocking their way. Yes, it is a stupid design. You can see why uh, Eleanor started to die and Del had to take over. But uh, what I think I'm going to do is probably get some mesh like this. Cut a hole here, like a little square there. Put the mesh there and then maybe sand it some way to make it look somewhat acceptable. But I may or may not try that until I have another... Uh, one of these things on because right now this is the only one I have this is the only uh, power panel I have so I don't want to ruin it if it's not worth it now, I will put the keyboard back in place to show you what happens when it's uh, when it is in uh, the correct orientation There we go, all the things are pressed down. There we go, now you can see better. You can see that the temperature is going up and up and up. And it was at 75 before. I should probably leave it like that anyway, so that the thermal paste shut in and stuff like that. Along with the memory. But listen to it. Let's see how high it'll go for the camera. I'm going to open up NVIDIA control panel to show you that... That is uh, showing up correctly, but the thing. So here is NVIDIA control panel. Two 9800 MGTs it says. Set SLI and physics. Uh, SLI is enabled, but it is bridgeless SLI. So it's not going to give quite as much performance as it could. But you can't really do anything about that since these cards have no SLI connector. They're quadros for a notebook. They're not meant to do that. And they're up to 76 on uh, some graphics card. While the other is at 50. If I can figure out which one is getting really, really hot by holding my hand over the exhaust. I can't really tell which one is which from doing that. Both of the fans are uh, ramping up. Both graphics card fans are ramping up to compensate for that one car being really hot. <clears throat> what I might try to do, actually, is try swapping the cards, uh, swapping their places. Because if I can get the uh, the hot one to be the, the secondary one and not work as hard, then it won't get as hot. Actually, it does seem like it is the the new car that's getting hot, anyways. Hmm. I had a similar issue with the 9800 MGT I had before, how it would get really, really hot. Not this hot, but it would still get hot. I guess I'm going to let this sit while I eat dinner and see how hot it gets. Uh, threshold is 100 degrees, so I don't think it'll reach that unless something stupid happens. But yeah, uh, for now it, it is a su success. It does need some fine tuning. But that's part of the fun. And I cannot wait for that backlit keyboard. If you're up for that, then please go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Game Boy Out. I will see you in the future.